job done. We're going to do it reverse is how it's going to work through the season. We'll go from the closer to the starter. And Kyle, you're coming off a, a real nice year. And in each of the last two years, you've made strides. You had flashes where you were either really good or some rough outings. Last year, a lot more consistent. What is the next stride at this stage of, the, of your career for you on the mound? Oh, I mean, I think, you know, the one thing that Kurt just kind of hit on is uh, as a starting rotation, you know, we don't we don't sit there and collectively make goals for you know, how we want to how we want to pitch, how many quality starts we want to have. But last year it was it was a lot more refreshing to see that consistently we did a better job. We still have you know steps to take, uh, but compared to 2014, we did a better job. And you know, I think for myself, you know, just to consistently go in six and seven innings, I was a little bit better. Um, but you know, just like Perk kind of talked about, we were two games out of the playoffs. And if I sit here and say that two of my games out of my 32 starts, I couldn't have been better and made a difference, I'd be lying to you. It's pretty tough to look back and see how close we are and say, man, if I wouldn't have given up seven runs and five innings against Toronto, this could have been a, a different inning to the season. So, uh, you know, I was able to limit those starts this year and, and doing that more. And, and even if you do give up four runs, you go six or seven innings and save the bullpen. Uh, you know, I think Glenn was pretty humble there. Our bullpen even though people want to see, you know, different guys in the pen, our bullpen the last two years has been really good. And really, really kind of the consistent constant of the team. And, uh, you know, kind of the new trend is get a guy down there throwing 97 to 99 and put three of them down there and let it go. Well, we've got guys who aren't throwing 97 to 99 being very consistent. And uh, so a big change there I didn't think was too necessary. But, um, you know, I think it's going to be a fun year. And, and if us starters can stay healthy and, and compete like Glenn was talking about. It's going to be even a better year than last year. Let's talk about the starters. Urban Santana for a full year. Bill Hughes coming back. Yourself. Tyler Duffy was phenomenal down the stretch. They've been throwing the ball as well as anybody the last month of the season. You got Tommy Malone, Trevor May potentially a starter. There's also some young guys like Barrios that a lot of people want to see. Do you like the competition within the team to be the first five guys out of the gate? Does that make everybody better? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, a good, healthy competition for for you know any group of guys makes makes you a better player. And uh, you know, for me, I just want to go out there and my, my mentality in spring training is going to be the same that's been the last couple of years. Go out there and throw the ball as well as I can and try to make the decision as tough as possible in the front office. So there's a lot of cap capable arms that are going to be you know some of those five guys in rotation. And uh, you know, it's going to be hard to argue that you know Tommy Malone doesn't deserve a spot with the career he's had. You know, it's going to be hard to argue that. Trevor May, who you know was was really getting to be a pretty solid starter, like Perk said, before they moved into a pen. I mean, how are you going to argue that he doesn't deserve to be in rotation? And then you know Barrios is coming up as well. I mean, so for me, I just need to go out there and, and throw the ball well and, and see where they put me. We've seen some amazing defensive center fielders wear a Twins uniform. When you go back to the catches that Kirby made. When Burt was giving up those long fly balls once or twice. I made him a hero. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. We think about some of the catches Tory Hunter made with all those gold gloves. We saw Ben Revere make a catch on Vlad Guerrero that I I still can't believe. We saw Aaron Hicks go over the wall. Byron Buxton defensively. Maybe, Kyle, you want to handle this one. You've seen Byron a bit. His ability when the ball is in the air to center field, combination of speed and, and leaping ability and, and getting jumps, uh, should these fans be ready to get out of their seat every time the ball's in the air at center field? Um, hopefully we don't have too many deep balls at center field <laughs> this year. Well, I'd like to see him make a lot of routine catches this year. That'd be great. Um, but when it comes to routine catches, when you see him, uh, he makes balls that are almost to the track or on the track uh, seem like routine plays. Um, you know, I think after a full year in the big leagues this year, it'll be very interesting to see, you know, how many – how many catches he makes that are outside of his expected range of defense? Let's see uh, the sabermetrics guy. On it's there. I mean, it's, it's a pretty cool stat to see. You know, they give you a little map and say, okay, this guy makes eighty percent of the catches outside of his range. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of that um, because he is very, very quick. Uh, there's no deception about it. When you see him on the bases, when you see him do anything on the field, he's extremely fast, and uh, he gets to a lot of balls that. Um, I'm not even going to say that Hicks can't get to. I think that's probably not fair comparison because uh, they're both very good. But he gets the balls and just is almost camped under them, and uh, it's pretty incredible. 